So you wanna add some cool dance moves to your character, but you just don't know how to get started? Hey, don't be sad. By the end of this video I guarantee you will have an awesome animation. I will show you a method that enables you to learn animating in no time. But first, let's get dressed appropriately. In order to animate a character, you first have to rig it. The rig or armature is something like the skeleton of your character, consisting of bones that are connected to each other or controlled by certain constraints. Bones work by binding the vertices with a certain weight that tells how they behave when the bones move. To rig our character, we will use an awesome free add-on called Rigify. So make sure to install it. For humans, there's the basic human meta rig, which is a simple skeleton without fingers or face bone. And there's also the human meta rig, which creates an armature with fingers and face bones. Since we will not animate the face, we can just get rid of the bones. Make sure to also delete the face bone here, which you can only see in X-ray mode by pressing Alt-Z. Let's adjust the bones to match our character's body. Go in edit mode of the rig and enable X-mirroring. Adjust the scale first and then move, rotate and scale the bones in edit mode to match the body of a character. When you're done, apply the rotation and scale of the rig and go to the object data properties to generate the Rigify rig. You can now delete or hide the old rig. Select all parts of your character, then the rig so that it is the active selection. Press Ctrl P and choose Armature Deform with Automatic Weights. This will automatically assign the armature modifier to your character's 3D objects. And when you go into pose mode, you can already deform your character's body by moving the different bones. What I like to do first is bring the character into an awkward pose to check if the weights are correct. You can already see there is something wrong with the cloth. To fix the weights, you have to enable the deformation bone layer in the object's data properties. Then select the rig first and with shift click the object you want to weight paint and go to weight paint mode. To see the bones, enable X-Ray with Alt-Z and by holding down Ctrl you can click on a bone to see and paint the weights. Pick the brush tool with a low strength, make sure to turn on Auto Normalizing and start fixing the weights. But this is not a tutorial about weight painting, so let's continue with our animation. In pose mode you can enable or disable the different bone layers here or here. Let's reset our pose and fix my material. The bone layers consist of the root bone which moves the whole character, torso for the head, shoulders, chest, hips and titties. There are also different tweak layers which I barely use. Then the arms and legs with inverse kinematics or IK and forward kinematics or FK. You can enable forward kinematics for your arms and legs here. My rule of thumb for whether to use IK or FK is if something touches the ground I use IK otherwise FK. When using FK the arms and legs move with the whole body which makes animating in air easier. Alright, let's jump in the animation tab and split our window to see our character from different angles during animation. I want a few from the front and one from the side. And we will need the dope sheet to save our animation and an action in the action editor. Let's create a first motion. In pose mode, go to the first frame, select all bones, press I and insert keyframes for location, rotation and scale. Go to frame 20. Create a different pose by moving the bones and insert the frames again. Adjust the end of the animation to frame 20 and press play. Usually professional animators go through following steps. Block out key poses with constant interpolation, create the poses in between and refine the motions between the poses in the graph editor. But to get to this stage you first need to understand motion and how different bones interact with each other. So we need a method to become a pro. Everyone has his own method of learning, but there is one method we all have in common that we use since we are born. Learning by copying. By copying animations you learn how different parts of your body behave in certain poses. And by the third or fourth animation you'll understand enough to make your own animations following the steps mentioned before. We will use Mixer mode to download an already animated character and import it into Blender to use it as our reference. 
Let's find a cool dance move. Nixamo has a large collection of motion suit captured animations. And since the copy method works for all animations, you can freely choose whatever you want. Click on download, leave the settings as is, and back in Blender click on file, import, FBX and select your downloaded FBX file. If you've done everything correctly, you will see the model with all keyframes and can play the animation. We will now prepare our models to match each other and add some objects to better identify the motion. First, we have to bring the armature back in the rest position and scale it to match our character size. Now let's create an empty object, plane axis and use a cone as display. Shrink it and move it a little to the right of the hips. And duplicate it for the left side. Now comes a kind of difficult part. We need to parent these objects to specific bones. In order to do so, you first have to select the empty object, then the rig, then go to pose mode. Your cone has to be orange when entering pose mode. Select the very lowest bone of the spine, press Ctrl P and set parent to bone. You should now see this dashed line. Go back to object mode, select the other cone and do the same. The cones should now move the hips of the animated object. Duplicate the two objects by pressing Shift D and Enter. Select the left one, then the rig of your character, go in pose mode, make sure it is orange, and parrot it to this gear wheel bone. And the same for the right side. And check that ass to see if you've done everything correctly. Alright, one helper bone for the chest is left. Create another empty object and display it as an arrow. Move it to the chest and parent it to this bone of the Mixamo character. Duplicate the arrow and now when you're in pose mode of your character rig you have to go into edit mode to see the next bone. You can only see it in x-ray mode by pressing Alt Z. Select it, go back to pose mode and now you should see a circle with the name Spine FK. Parent the arrow to this bone. Alright, let's start with our poses. I will use FK for the arms and IK for the legs. Turn off all the layers you don't need and start replicating the first pose. Always start with the torso. Try to match the cones of a character to the ones of the Mixamo character. And in order to see the objects better, you can enable in front in the object properties. Let's adjust the torso. Then the legs. the chest by adjusting the torso and the chest bone. And the arms. Select all bones and insert the keyframes for this pose. Now we have to identify all the other key poses. When the direction of a movement changes or the movement stops, this is a key pose. So find your key poses and create keyframes. I will not bore you here and jump a little ahead. With all key poses blocked in, our animation already looks quite solid, but still a little bit clunky. So now we can start to refine it in the graph editor using motion paths. Motion paths can be calculated for every bone individually and represent the position of a bone for a certain point in time. They can help you find imperfections in your animation. When animating, the goal is to have smooth curves for most of your bones. But beware, oversmoothing the curves can cause your animation to look unreal and robotic. Let's prepare our screen for refinement and open up the graph editor. To not be distracted by the movement of different body parts, we will create masks and properties to hide certain parts. Since the motion of the torso is the most important and influences all other parts, we will first refine this bone and hide the arms and legs. To do so, let's create two custom properties on your rig with the float value and call them hide legs and hide arms. Then we have to define which vertices should be hidden. Create a vertex group with the name Hide Arms 
and one called tight legs. Select the vertices of the arms and assign them to the correct vertex group. The same for the legs. You can check if you did it correct by selecting the vertex group and clicking select. Now we have to add a mask modifier to our body. Select the hide arms vertex group and invert it. Go to your previously created custom properties in your rig, right click into hide arms and click on copy data path. And back in the mask modifier, right click on the real time display modifier, add driver, select averaged value, single property, select the rig and paste the data path and apply it by clicking on update dependencies. When you change the value of a custom property, you can now toggle on and off your mask. Create another mask and do the same for the legs. And of course for the clothes. Alright, let's refine our animation. When you select a bone, you see the graph for each individual setting for the bone in the graph editor. The goal now is to smoothen out the graph. Let's hide the rotation first and focus on the position of the torso. Here is a perfect example of a bad curve on my X position. You can select the keyframe and move it to make it smooth. But keep in mind to always check your animation after changing a keyframe. Some keyframes might look out of place, but in combination with rotation and other bones, the position can be correct. Let's check out the motion path. Huh. From the side view it looks pretty smooth, even if the keyframes look kinda random. But considering that my character jumps up and down all the time, it's fine. Ah, and a quick tip. Since you will use the motion path quite often, I advise you to add it to your quick favorites by right clicking on the button. Pressing Q in my case will toggle my quick favorites. Let me show you an example of fixing a motion with the help of the motion path. For example, I can see that on frame 73 the X position is a little too far to the left, which is represented by this keyframe in the graph editor. Let's move it a little bit up, recalculate our path and here you go. I've mentioned before that the torso is the most important bone when it comes to the motion, and here is why. When we look at the motion path of the chest, you can see a pretty bad curve here, which should look like this. But when I check the graph for this bone, it looks correct, so the issue has to be somewhere else. Let's expect the torso. And there it is. When we correct this little spike and update our motion path, our curve is smooth. Now that you know how to refine your animation, you can tackle it for all the other body parts. That's it, have fun animating!